Hello Internet, this is Whispering Whim. Today I'm going to be drawing an imp from the original Dungeon Keeper game. This game came back out in 1997, but it's new to me and I've been having a lot of fun with it. It is a base builder game, um, so you're kind of using the guy that I'm drawing right now as a, a miner to dig out this cavern that you fill with other creatures and then you fight either the heroes of the land or you might fight other dungeon keepers. Now, aside from the fact that I'm playing the game, the reason why I wanted to draw it today was that the original graphics um, are pretty limited. And while I could look at um, fan art or the more recent games, I figured it'd be fun to use that screenshot that I showed you earlier to um, inspire me to try to create a little imp of my own. Today's drawing medium is going to be brush pens, which I'm using right now. And then later on, we're going to add a little bit of paint. I didn't have any brown paint, so I kind of picked the blue paper because blue and orange are opposites. And I do have orange paint, so once I put that orange on there, everything will pop nicely. I'm definitely keeping it very loose today. Um, I could have gone through and created the image with a pencil first, but I find that my best drawings usually happen when I just sort of let go and um, accept that they're going to be a little flawed. Um, I think they have more spirit that way. Now you can kind of notice by now that he's got a a bit of a doofy expression. Um, in the game, you kind of, you slap these guys around to make them work faster. And it's all very dark and like, you're trying to make the world a worse place kind of a game. So I just thought it would be funny if these guys were just jolly little imps. That was uh, my inspiration there. Now as for why I'm doing a different video, because normally I do like to um, do a live audio so you can hear all the little pen marks and tapping and all that fun stuff. Um, but I had an unusual amount of noise pollution and I was looking at how much I would have to edit out and it was going to be like uh, 10 minutes long after I edited it and I thought about it and I know some people like the speed drawing videos because you get to the, you know, the wow factor sooner. Um, so I was going to try a voiceover, which is what I'm doing today, obviously. So, let me know how you feel about that. Because, honestly, it would probably make me relax a little bit more if I wasn't talking while I was drawing. Um, but I don't know if that's worth giving up all that fun little, you know, scratches on the paper and those relaxing kind of art noises. I'm definitely open to suggestions, so you can always leave a comment in the section below. Um, anyways, that's enough, like, pleading for comments. <laughs> um, as I've been playing this game, I've sort of noticed that the patience that I might have had when I was a kid 
Like, I feel like if I had played this game as a kid, I would have, you know, been very determined to do it because I never had any friends that could tell me how to do it. I didn't have an older brother to take over or anything, so as a kid, I think I would have just kept plowing along when something didn't work out, but in this modern age where I'm so used to now Googling everything, it's kind of interesting to play an older game where there's definitely still stuff to find um, online about it, but not to the same extent that it was before. Um, and I don't know, I get torn up, like, do I want to just keep playing? Or do I want to solve this level? Like, I've gotten very impatient. And I've had to watch a few Let's Plays. Because I just, you know, if I fail twice, I feel like that's enough. So, it's interesting how things change, you know? You know, it's just like one of the reasons why I didn't have brown paint is, uh, because I've kind of, you know, moved out of my parents' house, and a lot of my things are in storage, so I definitely have paint and paintbrushes and more paper options and all of that, but it's all hiding in storage, so it's kind of a, a game to see what I can do with the supplies I have on hand, because when I don't have the right supplies... <laughs> I'm guilty of um, going to the store and buying the new thing instead of going to my storage unit and trying to, to dig it out. So right now in the video, I'm just kind of layering my different markers. I have three shades of gray. It's sort of like a it's supposed to be a manga marker set, you know, for creating those beautiful soft black and white anime pictures. Um, I'm not really good at doing anime, but I love the pens. So when I'm doing like journaling or something like that, um, I use these. And because they have sort of three different shades of gray, you can kind of build it up, which really suits my more um, impatient style. Because I just go for the ba you know, I make the base drawing and I just go for it instead of uh, uh, being real clean. Particularly in this case, because I knew what the imp looked like in the game. And the graphics in the game are pretty um, basic. And so I figured instead of staring at a picture of an imp, which is, you know, maybe what I would do for some of my other drawings, you know, like when I did Flounder, I had a picture on my phone of Flounder that I was going straight off of. And for this guy, um, I looked at what an imp would look like. But then I just sort of put the phone away and I, I went for it. Which means that there's going to be a lot more um, figuring it out as I go. For being an artistic type, I, um, I don't think I'm actually that creative. Um, I can draw what's in front of me very well. But when it comes to like building up something, you know, from, from scratch or that's in my head, doesn't quite come out the same. So that's why I kind of have started being very loose and very sketchy when I draw, because it encourages me to ignore those imperfections because they're going to be there regardless because of the style. And I can just kind of use the shading to kind of 
pretend that I knew what I was doing all along. So, kind of just mental games with myself, I suppose. After I get all the gray in there, go back through with my handy dandy Sharpie and kind of darken everything up. Um, I, I was kind of running across the problem that I had put down so much gray ink that the paper was physically wet from it, which is sort of the, the point of those pens. You know, they kind of, it's not a, it's not exactly a watercolor pen, but it has a very similar effect because they're meant for shading. Um, but my Sharpie definitely didn't, didn't appreciate that the paper was wet. Um, but it's good to get in those dark lines, kind of give that drawing a little more pop. Um, right now it's gonna kind of not look as good as it can be because there's no color in there. And blue is sort of a, it's an odd choice for a paper. I have fun with the colored papers though. One of my favorite things about, you know, drawing on a colored paper is that when you add white back in, um, today I'll be using paint, but in some of my previous drawings I've used like white charcoal. Um, but when you add white on top of a colored paper, suddenly everything has so much more life to it and depth. And uh, since I know I'm not like a picture perfect artist, um, I try to make sure my drawings have as much character as possible. That's why the, the doofy little imp is smiling over there. If um, anyone has any suggestions for other old games I should try, um, I'm definitely willing to hear that. And um, I really want to know what people would like to see me draw. Usually when I can get someone to be like, I want to see a video, uh, it's always been role-playing requests. And I could do role playing. I know I could, but uh, I don't know. I have enough different kinds of videos on the channel already that I don't want to dilute what time I have with a whole nother type of video, especially because I get the feeling it would be actually more popular than what I'm doing now. Um, and it's just, when you get into the role play videos, I find that some people are there to relax, which is the goal, right? That's why I'm speaking in a nice, calm voice. Um, so I want people to relax. What happens is that there's a really fine line between normal relaxation and other activities. <laughs> um, and I think I'll leave that at that. Um, but that's why I haven't gone down that road yet. So if there are art ideas uh, specifically that people want to see, I really do want to hear. <laughs> and I promise that I wouldn't say or plead for comments all video long. <laughs> so... It's really different when you do sort of a voiceover instead of a live, um, live talking. Because I know a lot of times I'm lifting my tools up to the camera because I'm explaining something and um, my dialogue just won't match up the same way. And because of that... There's actually less to talk about, it feels like, but, um, yeah, I don't know. We're just going to keep forging ahead, right? So, 
So you can kind of see that I don't have a normal paintbrush. That's another thing that's kind of off in my storage unit. But I find that the little dabber that I have, which is meant for making little dots of paint, kind of works well in this case. Because um, sort of what I've done is I've taken regular paint and I've watered it down. So you could call it watercolor, but um, mainly I was just trying to make it so that all that marker that I put down before can show through and possibly mix in with the, uh, the paint and uh, kind of give us a better sense of color and depth and everything. Because I don't know if you can quite see it, but... The paint that's directly on the little dabber, it's a pretty bright orange. Um, and that was intentional. Well, sort of. I mean, it was the one paint that I had, but um, uh, that bright orange against the blue, you know, as soon as you put it on the blue paper, it kind of dulls it a little bit. And I think it gives me a more appropriate color scheme colors is one of my my favorite parts of um, painting or drawing or you know digital art you know just the way color interacts with itself it's like a its own little science right um, and I think that that's the most fun because coloring can be a lot more subjective you know, everyone knows what a butterfly should look like, but there are orange butterflies and there's purple butterflies and, you know, a whole spectrum. So at that point, it's more about taste, right? I think the drawing's coming along pretty well, though. Uh, it's definitely not the uh, most realistic thing I've ever done. But those big beady eyes are cute, I think. <laughs> Especially now that uh, we can kind of lighten them up with the paint, right? And you'll notice that I've gotten a few little um, white lines in there. Uh, just kind of rolling that paint dabber and using the edge of it is sort of the way that I can accomplish that. Um, one of the other techniques I was using was kind of like pushing it at an angle so more paint would squish out one side versus the other. Um, yeah, I don't know, just a lot of back and forth because um, I had on the plate, it's kind of just out of view, I have sort of an off-white. I have that really bright orange and then I have a bright green. And um, you'll see it towards the end here. I do add in a tiny bit of the green, but I'm not, I wasn't a fan of it. I sort of, I wish I had stuck with just the white and the orange, but live and learn, right? What was really nice about um, using this tool and this technique is that I could have those little stylistic paint strokes while still using all of that work that I put in um, with the marker. And it really makes all those little scribbly marker lines um, seem intentional. You know, like they have purpose and reason. Um, it's kind of my main goal when I'm drawing is to uh, make all my flaws look like they're something worthwhile. Kind of my philosophy in life too, I suppose. Now, we're far enough along that you can kind of see what I mean when I say the orange and the blue really work together nicely. 
Um, for example, if you look at that apron in the front there, I think that it really looks like it's on top of everything else. And the funny part is, is that out of the, the creature, that area has the least amount of, of work done. So it's mostly paper that's showing through. Um, but just because it's sort of a little bit brighter than the surrounding area and because blue kind of catches your eye, it just makes that whole apron kind of move forward. So I was definitely happy with that result or that, that effect, right? And then I probably should have left well enough alone. <laughs> At a certain point, um, I started, you know, thinking, oh, where can I add more color? Because I got that dirty, almost brown orange that I was looking for. And I was like, oh, I don't know if that's bright enough. I don't know if that's going to really catch anybody's eye. So I insisted on adding more and more paint, which, you know, kind of refined the drawing a little bit. Um, but there's just a few little awkward spots, like down in the bag. That's one of the areas where I added a tiny bit of um, the brown or the green to the orange to make a more brown brown and it's almost too much right <laughs> um, but it was a fairly successful venture um, I wanna thank everybody for watching and listening and um, I hope you have a wonderful evening <laughs>